Live from the studios of Coefficient Media in Jackson, Michigan. This is the Android App Show, episode number 58. This week, Android gets mono, and Pandora does a little bit of oversharing. Mm. Welcome to the Android App Show. Welcome to the Android App Show, everybody. We've got Android apps to talk about because that's what we like to talk about. Android apps. We got some Android app specialists also. Ooh, Dude. specialists on the couch. On the couch. Going to cover some cool apps this week. What do you think, Brad? Uh, I think we got some good ones. Yeah, like I like one of your apps. Although I'm kind of uh, reticent to see what I would look like after. Uh, the, <laughs> <laughs> I can do that if you want. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll do that for the uh, for the live review. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how that shakes out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, you want me to start off with that then? It's a big app. Yeah, yeah. All let's, right, uh, it's let's, called. Let's uh, do this thing. It's called Fat Booth. All right, what it does is it takes uh, any picture you got. You can take one uh, right away, you know, with your camera, just snap one and go, or you can uh, pick one from your existing <laughs> gallery. So I'm gonna bring this up on the uh, HDMI out. All right. Oops. A little bit of preview in there. I'm gonna have to take one of somebody here. Yeah, and as usual, the people on the audio only uh, feed are missing out. Yeah, you're not going to be able to so, get this one. If you're so, not, uh, I'm going to start here. And then that's what pretty it, good. Yeah, what it gives you, you know, no profile. Use only front face photo if you want to, like, you know, do yourself, I guess. <laughs> or you can choose one from your gallery. But I'm going to snap one of Lane over here. There oh, Lane. I need a good front face shot here. All right, here we go. Ooh. Okay. Very nice. Do the, uh, so the three, now what you got to do is hit um, OK, and I hit OK. Why is it not working on your phone? I don't know. It should work. OK. OK. We're hitting the OK button. OK. 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 Apparently things are not OK. That's not OK. Oh, there it goes. Ah, oh, uh, OK. OK. And it uses it puts that picture on there. It doesn't do the regular one. Like Hold on, no face detected. You ain't got no face. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, do we want to try anyway. it again? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I, I was making a face. What I was the heck? Doing... Oh. Oh, it was sideways. Mm. Oops. Do you have to take the picture in portrait mode or landscape? I thought you could take it in landscape. I mean portrait. That would make sense. Well, I don't know. Something's funky. I guess so. Hit camera. We'll try it again. All right, I'll give another rundown. I, w I won't make a face this time. Ready? Here we go. That's perfect frontal. There we there go. There we go. Fat booth. I mean, Force my closed <laughs> on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, turn off the HDMI out for a second here. I don't need them to see all those pictures. But it doesn't save it to the gallery, though, when you took those pictures. Oh, crap. Yeah, go something. I can take it again. Dang it. Do you have something existing? What can I do, your kid? Yeah, well, it's got all. It, my phone has the uh, our Picasa account hooked up, and we upload all Holy our pictures crap. to Picasa. Pick a good one, all right. Just Sounds take a good existing better. camera. We'll do. We'll do uh, Trevor. I don't know if in a hood's gonna work. Oh yeah, that'll work. Yeah, it found him. All right, so line up the eyes. This is Trevor. He's a good sport. Yeah, he's gonna have to be. <laughs> And the chin. So what is it? you got to explain what you're doing there. You're dragging to indicate. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can shake your phone before, after, before, after. Nice. And then you have the options to email it, Facebook it, tweet it, download it, or you can just erase it. But I don't know. Lane might want to show this to Trevor later. Yeah, I'll, I'll show him later. <laughs> so I'll just hit the download button. That's cool. He'll think that's cool. He'll, I'll, I'll let him take a picture of me later. He can uh, he can fatten me up. <laughs> and then when you go back to the start screen, it'll show all your recent uh, pictures before and after. That's weird, too, because it's kind of the reverse from the top one, the example. Yeah, it is. Shows fat and then skinny, and then the pictures are skinny and then fat. That is weird. 
What's going on? But that's fat booth. That's a really all there is to it. It just makes people fat. And it, well, it's free though. Or fat. You know, or, what else do you want? You know. Right. You get the free yeah. It is free. Yes. So my second app is um was it temp verse temp temp plus CPU version two. This is a extremely simple app. It's probably going to take me all of like 60 seconds to explain or less. Um, what you see on the uh, bottom left corner there is pretty much what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, so uh, is your, the uh, widget. <laughs> so when you download it, oh, wow, your, th- your thing is really laggy here. You want to show the, the HDMI out there? As you can see over here on the right side of the screen, there is a little widget. Um, it shows his oh. current clock speed, uh, CPU speed. Along with the percentage of the uh, the load, so to speak. Yeah, so you can see it automatically down clock itself too when you're not doing it using it's a two forty five, which I, I should probably set the minimum a little bit higher. And then it's got the current temperature in Celsius. You can also buy this app. There is a paid version of it, although I'm not sure what the paid version cost. And it has a few more options, but I mean, for what you need, this is pretty much it does it all. Um, and then it's got your uh, available RAM. 191 out of 256. Wow, I got a lot more than you. Or is it, do I have 512 on that? or Like mine, I've got. He's going to brag now. <laughs> <laughs> I've got 290. I've got like 100 more megabytes than you right there. Jeez. That's probably the issue, though. I think there's a memory leak somewhere on my phone because wow. I'm getting some weird lag and issues. My going. CPU temperature is a lot lower than yours, too. By like three degrees. Well, well let's not. see. And I'm, mine's over screen mirroring, though, too. Yeah, yeah and I'm mirror. overclocked. Yeah. I've got mine from 1 gigahertz to 1.5. Yeah. But are you sure? Because you remember when they overclocked the G1. No, this, every app I put on here that says, you know, the the current CPU speed tells me yeah. it's running at 1.5. Nice. When it, hit, when it peaks anyways. Yeah. But, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to uh, that temp plus CPU. It's just CPU, temperature, load, and RAM. I like it. That's pretty nice. Very simple. Yeah, right on your home screen, easily accessible. Yep. And then when you click it, it just disables it. That's all there is. So you can just disable it and leave it there and then enable it or whatever. So it doesn't use resources? Uh, not if you disable is that what you're it. you're saying? Nice. Pretty so nice. Nice see, feature. Show the show it, and I'll show it's disabled. Disabled. He's going to go through it. It's a whole rigmarole to go <laughs> through <laughs> the, <laughs> the overlay to the, uh, to the screen. Oh, yeah. See, oh, disabled. Yeah. It's red. Enabled. Disabled. It's enabled. Red. Boom. There you go. That's free. And you can also buy it paid. Do, what is it, like a donate version or something? Some, I, no, you get more features with the paid one. Hmm. That's all I got. Huh. Sweet. How Short and sweet. Out. Okay. Well, I have a couple apps to review this week as well. The first one, I don't know uh, about you guys, but it's getting pretty warm Hot. Today it's getting hot in here. Uh, up in Michigan, it just broke eighty. I think I was gonna. I, I think I read eighty-five on my dash. Schwitzen. Yeah, it's yes. getting hot in here. Uh, Schwitzing like crazy. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but yeah, warm weather means fishing. Mm-hmm. So, uh, cold this, fish in a cold weather too. That's true. That's true. We did uh, well. You didn't go out nice fish with Tim and I. Uh, no. In the summertime, but I got you some ice fishing in this year. Whatever, <laughs> I ice fish in the summertime. <laughs> it's the best time to ice fish. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Put your big block of ice out there. No, <laughs> so this app is called My Fishing Advisor, and it's a free app that you can uh, download. And uh, let's see, I'll bring up the phone here, show you that, show you the goods right away. So boom, you open this up. And it says, uh, it's working. Working. Which is not what you want to do when you're fishing. That's right. <laughs> this It's kind of weird. It it doesn't feel like a native Android app. I don't know if they ported it to something or if they made it from something else. Yeah. Looks but like you got to hit start and then you got to tap here to accept these terms. Looks like a nasty Java app or something. Yeah. It could be. Uh, so let's see. If we go into options here, you can choose what kind of fish you fish for. And I've narrowed this down. Uh, to bluegill and sunfish, yellow perch and walleye. Oh, you need to get some pike up in there. Uh, yeah, I'm not real big on pike. Sorry, I don't bass fish. I don't do anything else. I could put really? cra- uh, crappie on here. As it uh, looks mm. like on here, crappy, C R A P P I E. It's crappie. Crappy. <laughs> some crappy I don't know. <laughs> so they have a pretty good variety, though. 
uh, and things like red ears and stuff that'll be underneath bluegill and sunfish. Uh, and then you can choose what kind of bait you like to use. A very extensive list. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that way it can kind of. Uh, then you you hit done down here at the very bottom. You can set your fishing method to trolling or jigging or, or whatever. So uh, once you do that, go to the top to get fishing advice. Uh, you can do here use GPS. Uh, same location as last time. Location on map or back. Uh, the GPS is pretty straightforward, so I'm going to show you how to do the location on the map. You move the map around, it leaves that X right there in the middle. You can put it right on lovely Jackson, Michigan. Uh, you can switch it to a satellite map if you don't like the uh, road maps, so that if you get like really close or something, I guess, uh, you can, let's see, we'll go where I live right now. We'll go over here to, to Michigan Center Lake. So we'll pull this up, go next. So, it doesn't have in here what exactly the the lake is. And I have no clue what an acre is either. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so, I just choose uh, medium. But you can see, like, if it's a large river, small river, stream, pond, you know, wherever you're fishing, I think that basically decides what the weather temp, like, the water temperature is going to be and mm-hmm. all the other stuff, like how the sun penetrates it or whatever. So, when will you fish now in the future? I'm just going to hit now. Uh, that just decides when your timeline is. Hey, the entire lot that your house is on is probably one acre. Yeah. Wait, Mine's like a one The one acre. in center or the one in town? The one in center. You think You think so? This eh, is like one. Maybe, so you're on a, <laughs> one acre? I think mine's one acre. I was going to okay. say, because like, we're right on the lake, and yeah, the the backyard well, isn't as acre. big as the house. Yeah, maybe, maybe got a half acre. <laughs> Uh, so let's see, use weather report, which on here it shows 77 degrees, 17% cloud cover, 19 mile an hour wind, or you can enter it manually. So whatever. Uh, this part right here, uh, this is specific to the kind of, to the lake you're at, the water level, the water clarity, and the estimated water temperature. If you have that information, uh, you can do new conditions and kind of update that yourself. Uh, with your own information, like if you have uh, like a fish finder that does temperature readings and all the other good stuff. Um, but I just go with same conditions. Uh, and right here it asks you to change uh, the water stuff you want. Just hit next. Go right past that. This is the list of fish now uh, that you chose in your in the original, uh, in the options or whatever. Otherwise it's going to tell you everything. It comes by default showing you everything. So I've narrowed it down here. I'm interested in yellow perch, as we all should be. So it's going to tell me right now it's 8.28 p.m. And see on the far left of the graph right there, it's starting to drop off. You have a couple buttons down here where you can increment forward and backward by one hour. And it shows you uh, based on time, based on temperature, and how this fish in particular reacts uh, to temperature and such. But, you know, for feeding schedules and everything, uh, when they're likely going to be most active. So you'll see, you know, it kind of bumps up overnight and then early in the morning you know when you're supposed to go out uh i'd say between 5 and 10 a.m you get this pretty big spike right here so uh these yellow perch are getting more active so you can hit details down here and it tells you some pretty specific things i'm not going to read through all this um but it's nice it, it it does a good summary so like right now it says overall the yellow perch are not very active with the right tactics it can still be possible to catch them though which sounds like a pretty good BS summary. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're probably not going to catch anything, but I don't know. If you try, whatever. I'm not going to. So I'll get fishing advice. Same location as last time right now. Use weather report. Same conditions. Next. And then choose walleye. What's some crappy? And as you'll see, walleye. Very inactive. <laughs> mm. So now is not now is not the time. <laughs> Go back to uh, some crappie. Shows right there. Uh, get that nice morning spike. <coughs> mm-hmm. But you'll notice the it's not like they just copy the graph for everything. You know what I mean? Right. It uh, it's individually based on on the fish. Huh. And you see, like this is much more active than the walleye. It has a higher baseline. Mm. That's specifically Whoa. for the area. And it gets sleepy or something. Well, no, this is afternoon. See, it starts, that very oh. bottom is 11 a.m. So you really 11. shouldn't fish in the afternoon? No, not for not for bluegill. 
no, they're pretty. Uh, they're like late. Like this uh, starts going up at seven p.m. Huh. Again, uh, they're late or early morning is no when you'll why. get the best, the best out of them. Unless you're fishing pretty deep. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah. It'd be all the way down to the bottom. Yeah, and most people don't really fish for bluegill deep. That's uh, you know, your bigger stuff or whatever, like walleye. If you're wanting to go in some of these surrounding lakes, we got a crap ton of lakes around here, don't we? Yeah, we do. Mm-hmm. So. It's true. So that's some pretty good stuff. Um, I can't wait to try it out. We got our first 80 degree weather day today. Up until now, it's been maxed out at what 60. We didn't even have a 70 degree day. It no. went 60, 80 right away. Yeah, pretty much. So I think we got some of that warm weather coming up uh, from the south, but. Take advantage of this warm weather now. Uh, well, it's download already done. My yeah, fishing well. advisor and uh, go do some fishing. Good stuff. We're back down to the fifties after today. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's oh, not cool. Well. well, I'm sure we'll uh, we'll get another break up. Yeah, a couple weeks from now. Coming here soon. So this last uh, application we have to review today is called Pew Pew, pew, pew. Two. Pew Pew Two. Pew, so, pew. and we have uh, flight control up on there for some reason. Whoops. So oh, those are the right <laughs> icons, uh, but this is called Pew Pew. It's one word: P E W P E W, a space, the number two, and it clocks in at two dollars and eighty-seven cents. So uh, two ninety-nine. That's what I just paid for it. Yeah, that's the weird thing about this. You know, Android just came out with this uh, feature for developers that lets you price the app for different countries. So if you want to sell it for a specific amount, I think this is like a European developer. So if you want to sell it for something in euros now, it doesn't automatically do that conversion uh, <coughs> right over you know to dollars to two eighty seven. We'll It'll it. let you charge a little bit more to make it two ninety nine, which makes more sense. Definitely in the uh, in the American you know currency. Plus, it makes more sense for the developer. Boom, talking about pennies. Um, <laughs> so hey, everybody count, counts when you're getting two hundred and fifty thousand some downloads. That's right. So you want to do the uh, switch over here to the HD cam? Sure. And we'll uh, we'll do a review. I previously reviewed Pew Pew. You know, no. one. It doesn't say one, but I put that icon over there on the right on the bottom. It's a great game. A little bit simpler, though, than this one. Love the music in this game. Yeah. The music is awesome. You'll notice it looks pretty similar, but they got this pretty cool rotating background now. Uh, same thing that we reviewed before, where you can do a, a joystick placement, uh, which, if you have a screen that doesn't. Uh, do full support for multi-touch. You know, if it's kind of like the hacked multi-touch or whatever. Um, or if you're having problems with the game, really that's how you're going to find out if your phone really doesn't do full multi-touch. Then you'll want to put one joystick like over here in this corner of the screen and then diagonal down in the other corner of the screen. Because uh, you'll get the best accuracy. But if you have a true multi-touch phone, uh, you can put them both on the bottom. Uh, so these are just some of the settings. You can increase the line width, make stuff look cooler. So I'm going to play. Uh, the The more you play, the more ships you unlock again, just like the last, uh, the original one that we reviewed. And uh, they've added three more, though. Oh, so I just recently undo- uh, downloaded this and wanted to uh, start unlocking things. Uh, but if you go to infinity mode, you'll see the uh, first three across the top are the same, and so is the one on the left. Uh, Pandemonium, Dodge This, Assault, and uh, Chromatic Conflict. So if you if you view the other review, I'm, I'm kind of going to skip over some of the things we did in the other review. Uh, but they have a new one called Highway, and on this one, the objective is to collect the sphere pointed to by the blue arrow to gain points. The faster you are, the more points you gain. So... They put you in this level that's looking a little bit different. And see all these other things are like square pointy things? Square pointy things. But that one round thing is the yeah. one you have to collect, and the arrow points you towards it. Oh, that's what you're supposed to do? Well, for, this is one of the, they call them infinite games, which means you just go for a high score. And these are what you use to unlock uh, new ships. So which new I don't, ships. Uh. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which I, the new ships, I don't think they give you anything special. Uh, they're just cool. I mean, they're cooler than this one. I kind of wish I had my other ship that I unlocked on the other game on nope. this one, but you don't get credit for that. And okay. this one is... This gun that I have on here now 
is very cool. I call it the double dutch because it looks like a, a double dutch ropes or whatever, like jump ropes. And I, like I told Brad earlier, it's the I, what I really like to call it is the uh, double dutch oven. <laughs> so put the pressure on them with it. Nice. So you just keep doing this until you run out of lives or, and, and shield. I'm at two right now, so I don't think I have that much longer before I'm going to end up kicking the bucket. But we'll see what kind of a high score I can get. There we go. There's one more. Cause I want to, dude. I want to unlock a shield, another oh, shield, oh, pretty oh, bad. Oh, oh, oh. oh, you just got blowed up. Up. Yep. Score fourteen fifteen. So. Uh, it says I got to get 2,000 just to get a bronze. Mm. Haven't quite made Dang. it there. So, And then you have to complete Chapter 1 and complete Chapter 2 to unlock these other ones. Try as I have. Let's see. I'll go to Play. Go to Campaign Mode. And then you have Easy, Normal, and Hard. Uh, and then Chapter 1 is the first one that it has. And I have that. It says 70% done. Um, but when I was on it, it said that it was. It, I was on the boss. Maybe you should switch to Easy. Maybe. The boss. Yeah. Like a boss. Like yeah, a the boss. boss. So you start out here. Uh, but the great thing about this, that's why, because I, I didn't, I skipped over some of these levels. It lets you choose after uh, your first one, okay. Ying or Digest. And they're they're all different. They all have uh, interesting things about them. Uh, but you can go back and well, beat them if the you want to get 100%. Too. I took all the top ones also. Well, this is oh, no, bottom on this one. Yeah. And then top one here. All the way up to the boss. And the boss on this is pretty interesting. Um, it has a... I don't know. This this is all completely new, by the way. The campaign. This is completely unique to Pew Pew 2. Pew Pew. Yeah. And this thing... Looks pretty boring. The walls bounce, uh, bounce your bullets around, which is different. Uh, the other levels don't do that. Um, but you have to kind of bounce them around oh. the uh, shield that he has. And then when he oh turns boy. green, you just spend all your time dodging all the bullets that he sent out. Yeah, or not dodging in your case. Well, you know, <laughs> it's a little bit hard to explain this when you're playing it live. So have a little bit of uh, give me a cut me a little bit of slack. A little bit, maybe. You know. Oh, he just got blowed up. Yikes. So you'll and see. He grows, other. doesn't he? <laughs> uh, no, he doesn't clear. grow. It the, well, the oh, shield does. The shield, yeah. yeah. And this is hard. This is really hard. I mean, ask Brad. I. I've been yeah, I know. That's what she said. <laughs> oh boy! There we go. Dodge those. Yeah, 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 it gets yeah, pretty yeah. hairy. So when you're when you're fighting the boss, you use a lot of different skills. You know, some of the games are all completely dodge. Does he follow you around? Yeah, yeah. He moves very slowly, uh, but creep. intimidates you. And part of the <laughs> part of the thing with that too is, uh, you know, with these. Oh, just run right you know, into with it. trying to get around. <laughs> Sorry, I'm talking at the same time again. It's not too. It's not too easy to play a game and explain it at the same time. Um, but let's see. When it turns, uh, yeah, like the shield Mark gets Tony. bigger. You have to shoot to the opposite wall to get around the shield. And with him constantly moving, it makes it hard to get a good fix on where he is. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, a good angle. And really juke him. There we go. That's pretty big. This is. See, I don't have any shield or lies, so yeah, oh. one hit and I'm done. Done. Oh well, I'm gonna Game keep working over. at that boss. And uh, once I beat that uh, chapter one, though, I'll be able to go on to chapter two. And in the infinity mode, I'll have a new thing unlocked to play. So, pretty cool. But it's. I like this one too. It says. Uh, see the world's top scores with the go online button. Watch replays with the play button. Upload scores with the upload button. Where are those? Yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Well, let's see. I'll go to. I'll play one of the classics, the Pandemonium. This is just the straight up shoot 'em up and survive. Uh, straight out of Pew Pew, the original. You gotta kill all these guys, get points to unlock stuff. I guess the point is I probably should die so that we can see this stuff. Because yes. I'll just... Uh, you keep playing for hours. I will. <laughs> <laughs> Act like I won't. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> you didn't do very well on that one. Oh, that's weird. Oh, so right there. You can hit that score. 
You're going to watch a replay at a different angle, see? Whoa. Instead of above. It's kind of cool. It needs to be in 3D. You can drag it That'd around with sick. your finger. Oh, well, it kind of is. It's on a plane, at least. Yeah. Yeah. You were saying this guy should totally do, like, 3D glasses kind of thing. Definitely. You know, like the Speed X or whatever? Yeah. This seems like it's made for 3D. Yeah. That would be pretty awesome. It is made in 3D, at least. So, there it is. You tap... Uh, it, it was very short, but let me tap that again, and it'll speed it up, see? Yeah, let me tap that Ooh. again. <laughs> so that's cool. You can see my, uh, well, of course, on the screen where you saw it, it had the uh, the joysticks, and then you hit upload, and you share it to other people. But that score is too shameful. I'm not going to upload it. <laughs> no, I would not do that. So, and if you really want to get into it, you know, if you don't think I would explain it well enough, you can hit the tutorial down there, and it'll walk you through how to play this game. But again, it is... Uh, called Pew Pew 2, Two, and it is free. No, it's not. Okay, no, it's not. It's <laughs> two ninety nine, two ninety nine on the Android market. So, download this. Download it now. I love this game. Mm -hmm. We were going to keep the music going the whole show, actually. Yeah, you could. Oh, you want me Good to? No, 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 no. <laughs> That's crazy music. Yeah, see, I don't know. There's something wrong, because even the, the screen animation, when I closed it, it went in slow motion. Oh, well. Slow motion. Slow motion for me. Hmm. All right. Well, you know what we have now? Some news. Android <laughs> <app> <laughs> news. So, you know, we got to work on some sort of a cool uh, music. Everybody's doing cool intros and transitions now for their their stuff. They got this uh, music and videos and crap and like stuff. graphic effects. We got this. Boom. That's pretty <laughs> cool, too. We well, look, I mean, we have the HDMI out. Yeah. You know, for the phone, not seeing anybody else doing reviews uh, for Android on the uh, the HDMI out. So right. whatever, so all kinds of switches and buttons. Yeah, we can yeah. do lots of stuff. See, so watch this. Woo! Hey, it's like them old school cartoon ones. Well, it reminds me of uh, Super Mario Three. You know, at the end of the oh, levels, oh yeah, it went, that too. <laughs> hey, we could just do that. Nice <laughs> to get out of the game at reviews. Anyway. So, uh, some interesting things happening this week. Holy crap. The first one to cover, or the first one I wanted to cover anyway, is Pandora's Android app is gathering an insane amount of information on you. So, when you're using it, when you're listening to music, yeah, you're thinking, uh, you know, we're just having a good time here. You know, Pandora, I'm sure, I, you know, they put the ads right down there so you might accidentally click on them. <laughs> Maybe that's enough for them. No. So this uh, company, Veracode, which is an application security company, you can submit your app to them and they'll uh, run it through these tests and give you like a uh, like a, an approved by whatever, mm -hmm. you know, an official Veracode stamp. So they, they're they saying that uh, the Pandora app for Android knows your birthday, your gender, your phone's unique device ID number. And your current GPS slash fuzzy location, depending on what you have enabled on your phone, mm -hmm. and even where you work and where you live, wow, based on your GPS patterns. Really? Well, think about it. Like Google, Google has kind of let this cat out of the bag with the update to the Google Maps app. You can pull up latitude, and it'll show you where you spend your time, and it'll show you how much time you spend at work, how much mm -hmm. time you spend at home, and how much time you spend out. Right. And it knows this because. It, you know, it sees when you're at this specific location, and then it does a search and it says, "Yep, that's a business." And then at this oh. location is a residential neighborhood that must be your home. You know, and if you're there all night, you're probably sleeping there. It's probably your home. So, and then they can do the the nice pie charts and graphs and stuff that they have on there. Well, advertisers can do the same thing. So, um, yeah, apparently Pandora is using five different advertising li libraries. So we're not sure which one. Is uh, the offending one? It's on Ad Marvel, which I never heard before. Ad Mob, which is a Google company now, and Comscore, which sounds like Comscore. It sounds familiar. They do a website rankings. Yeah. Link? Yeah. Okay. And AdSense, of course, which is Google and Media Lets. Mm -hmm. I thought it was Media Alerts, but it's Media Lets. So good times. I don't know how I should feel about this, but I feel pretty creeped out. What are they doing again? Explain Collecting it one more time. Personal yeah, so when your your Pandora app can track your gender, birthday, phone's unique 
device ID, your current location using GPS or cell towers, whatever you have mm-hmm. enabled, yeah. and even where you work and where you live based on the GPS data it collects. So one of the what they're saying, what what Vericode is saying, that there is a method in there that is looping, asking for the GPS data, and they don't know which one of the five uh, ad networks or whatever it's using for that. Did they say AdMob in there? Yes, that's probably it. Why? Well, yeah, AdMob does do some location-based stuff, but the problem is it keeps looping and collecting the data. You know, I just I don't want Pandora knowing everywhere I go. You guys are just now talking about this for Android. Yeah, well, uh, when the when the issues is, I think though that it doesn't. I don't know. People just aren't made aware of it, and it's the same thing that came up on iPhone. I yeah. know, but I think that when you have that laundry list of things that says, do you want to give permission to this app to do, you know, X, Y, and Z? It should be made more clear to people that yes, this app is going to track where you go. No, you don't necessarily have to have the app open. It can start a service to do that. And it's going to send it to somebody and sell that information. Yeah. And that's what Pandora is doing. So it's free music though. So if you want to make the decision to, you know, get something like that that you're not going to be paying for, not paying for a monthly service, and maybe this is one of the trade-offs you have to make. Mm. I mean, uh, what do you think, Brad? Are you are you comfortable? I know you're a Pandora user. Was. Was? Yeah, I haven't used Pandora in a long time. Uh, I've you'd been, be, be rocking that right now on that 4G around here. <laughs> yeah, I got all the music I want on my uh, SD card. Uh, yeah, that's true. Well, every now and then, though, I do get tired of the music, you know. Just download new stuff. Yeah. But I won't be at home. I'm like, ah, I'm just tired of this playlist. I'll open up Pandora. Uh, see what it gives me. True. So it's kind of fun for discovering music. But I honestly, I'm honestly going to say I'm going to uninstall oh, Pandora. Wow. So I'd even, uh, I'd, I'd do it right now. I wonder if Last FM is doing the same stuff. I don't know. I think a lot of the apps are. I mean, if they have an ad network detached, attached to it, I'm yeah. sure they're doing the same thing. Creepy. It's just a click yes button in the ad implementation so. mm. yeah they make it pretty easy huh yes they do see and i gotta say i might be more comfortable if they limited it from gps access so even if i had my gps right. on it wouldn't give them that if it just gave the cell tower location the rough location yeah i might be okay with that you know i'm it's still a little bit creepy you know and most you of know those do I that am, don't they but uh well if you have it disabled the gps disabled mm-hmm. but i mean as soon as you turn it on for you know, for whatever reason, or you know, inside Android, you if you're on a Wi-Fi network, it boom pins you right down to where you're at. Now, when we talked with the guy from uh, AdMob, I believe it was, yeah, Pinch Media, I think that's what what were they again? Just so we know, Vericode. Vericode. There was yeah. another one. Was AdMob one of the ones that was doing it also? A uh, Vericode is the company that. Owns ad Check Mob this. No, oh, okay. uh, we have Ad Marvel, Ad Mob, Comscore, AdSense, and Medialets. Yeah. So the Ad Mob guy, he was like, "We estimate your location. We don't give personal exact data away." At least yeah. the time when we interviewed him. Well, and you have to take him at their word because yeah, really, what else do you have? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, you know, do you trust the? Madison Avenue guy that says, oh, "Don't worry, <laughs> we're not don't gonna... worry. we won't yeah. tell anybody about that thing you do." Yeah, and especially when you hear more and more of these internet startups that when they when they burst, they well, go yeah. under. Psh, especially they sell like all the data that you know? that big one that came out that color app. Yeah, they said their primary business model is a data mining service. Yeah, and that that's pretty creepy when you couple that with the idea that they're recording the audio. Yes, that is uh with the photo to save like take. to to audio fingerprint your location well yeah they say they want to ve- they use it to verify that you're around the person that you're that is total bs <laughs> yeah. you can't make it you can't verify a location no. just based on audio no that's some the, cia stuff that's some C- <laughs> csi stuff they want to find like, out what tv shows you're watching um, yeah what music you're listening to that kind of stuff yeah it's and they complete can sell, data mining and they can sell ads to it yeah, because it's like, you know, it's as soon as the color thing came out, I was like, what is this for? You know, there's some cool things that you could do with it for special events and everything. But for most of it, it's totally worthless. Yeah. You know? I don't know. I don't uh, use it. Neither do I. I tried it out. I'm like, mm-hmm. whatever. 
not really that interesting. Um, but what is interesting, the Android market has had an update to the algorithms again. That was our favorite thing to complain about before. You remember that, Brad, how crappy the Android market search was? Updating to the algorithms. Yeah. Like a, the, the the market search results used to be so bad. And they've gone they've come a long way. So it's a lot better than it used to be. But now it looks like uh, apps that have a higher daily usage are ranked higher. That's good. When you search for them. Nice. So it doesn't just base it on results straight up, you know, in keywords or ratings. Yeah. Or it's downloads. Usage. Yeah, or downloads, which, yeah, that's a, good, that's a good point to raise, too, because I think it's a voting with your feet kind of thing. Yeah. You know, if you're using the app, then it must be better that is great. than the other things. Mm-hmm. So Sounds good. Nice it's to good, see. Good nice to see mining. some improvements. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Useful yeah. data mining. Well, because that does it. I mean, right? It makes you think. Like yeah. Google knows exactly when you what, open your app. Yeah. Where you're at when you open your app. Yeah. Local well, usage. And the, all these apps now have the. I'm sure almost all of them. Whatever they have that new security feature where it checks with Google mm-hmm. to make sure it's a legitimate app yeah. that you've purchased. So, yeah, it's. Uh, I'm sure there's tons of communication going on to that. I've been kind of upset about that sometimes when I open up an app and it says, sorry, you have to have an internet connection because I'll turn it off oh, sometimes. Oh, really? You have to? Uh, well, that's what I'm saying. I'll have my internet connection yeah. off sometimes, and when I go to open an app, it'll say, oh, we couldn't verify that this app wasn't stolen. Seriously? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So It should just let you use it. Yeah, I would think so, but no. Get to and maybe if it was like a, a couple times, mm-hmm. like it would let you use it five mm-hmm. times or something like that before it could check again. You know, don't make it every time. And maybe it was that fifth time that I did it. Maybe they're doing that, you know. Uh, But I've had it happen to me where it won't let me open an app or use it because it thinks I've stolen it. It happened more than once? It's happened, uh, I'd say, at least a half a dozen times. Oh, so that's not good. Yeah. If you're not not doing something illegally and you're being told you may be. upon by, yeah. Then that is not good. uh, Yeah. And that's the thing, too. I spend most of my day in a building that has very poor coverage, and if I leave my internet connection on, it just wears my phone down very Mm -hmm. quickly. So, yeah, I'm not going to leave it on all day long. Right. Screw you guys. Doesn't want to be tracked. (laughs) He works for the CIA. Yeah. So, and we were talking about Android gets mono on the intro. Uh, If you're not familiar with this, mono is the open source project for .NET. Oh, I thought it was a disease. Yeah, it so is. I. Yeah, it's a disease. Um, but this is actually, uh, well, I guess depending on your opinion of Microsoft products, this could be a disease. Yes. Um, but it was a way to bring Microsoft's .NET platform to Linux. So you could run .NET oh. apps on Linux. Hmm. Uh, well, now, uh, and of course, well, and these are all written in C Sharp, you know, which is... Yuck. Whatever. Uh, however you feel about that, but now .NET and C Sharp apps. Can, uh, sharp. <laughs> That's what I think. Of. That's what you think about it. C Sharp apps. C Shard. <laughs> I said Shart. <laughs> nice. So C Sharp apps uh, can be easily ported to Android. Um, but the other thing is too, if you're a .NET or C Sharp coder, you don't have to learn Java to write Android apps. Good. So you can totally rewrite it for the Android platform using your own native language. So I say it's a good thing. Nice. Yeah. I don't Very know. good. I don't, do they have this? They probably don't have this for iPhone. <laughs> no. Because you can't do the recompiling, no. right? They don't have that. Into it. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Whatever. Something awesome will end up coming to Android, and I'll brag about it later. So don't worry. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll let you know. I'll let you know, Dave. Okay. Um, But let's see. What else do we have here? Promotions at Google. Right, the total yeah. reorganization starring Larry Page. This is kind of crazy. Yeah, he's coming back to Google to shake things up. The CEO to reorganize and run things. I guess I didn't realize Eric Schmidt. He isn't totally out. Like he's right. He's on the board. He's going to be right? the front man still. I guess he. A lot of people say he's going to be like the lobbying person on Google's behalf. Yeah, because he has a lot of connections. And, and you'll still see him probably on the shows where, like, well, you remember when he had the Honeycomb tablet? Oh, I don't think so. You don't think I so? Don't From think what I'm hearing, like he's it. still going to be the evangelist for like the Google. PR kind of guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I heard he was going to be more of the, the 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 palm greasing the guy. Deal guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, you got to grease the skids, grease some palms, and the $500 haircut guy. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's a nice Washington uh, inside reference, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, so I guess that since Larry Page has taken over, he's doing some reorganization of the company to uh, make it more like individual startups, you know, so that each division is going to be run as a smaller company. It's a great idea. Yeah. Uh, I guess the whole vertical integration thing really isn't working for Google. They want to kind of, you know, pull back and uh, get back to their roots. So uh, Andy Rubin, uh, I'd like to say he's a friend of the show, but he's, he doesn't even know us. No. Uh, he's going to be the senior vice president of mobile. Cool. Uh, they don't even call it Android, I guess. He's the senior vice president of mobile. But there's these uh, these few people or whatever around. I, I don't know how to pronounce all these names, but it's pretty much been broken out into mobile, social, Chrome, which interesting. We can talk about that. YouTube and video, search, ads, and local and commerce. So two things that surprised me on here. Number one, uh, I guess I'll start with the less interesting one, local and commerce. So pretty cool stuff considering that all the rumors seem to be that Android is going to be launching the payment system with the NFC, and yeah. they already have some of the you know Q- QR code action that you can... If you're a business, you can put the QR code on your door and people mm-hmm. can scan it or whatever and um, pull up your deals and stuff. Uh, but Google's really kind of reached out to uh, them via the Google Places. So I don't know. Do you have anything signed up on Google Places? I, I have a, at least one. I used to have another one too. Google Places. Yeah, you can you register your business as a location. Oh, where this is. And, and then you can manage the contact information, billing, et cetera. Yeah. Um, but then you also get information based on if people do local searches for it. Right. It'll show what they were searching for, how many of those people clicked on your stuff. All the, I have to do a lot more of those. All the good things. Um, but the other thing that's surprising is that Chrome has been given mm-hmm. a senior vice president oh, that's good. Uh, level access. I, I consider this almost like the president's cabinet, you know, like mm-hmm. a cabinet level official. This is like the cabinet of Google, and Chrome now has a ta- uh, seat at the table. Um, I don't know. There's there's been some news leak out that uh, the Chrome source code is getting tablet code dumped into it now, hmm. uh, kind of hinting that there could be a tablet coming out. So, which is I don't know. We've talked about that before, competing with Android. Uh, don't know exactly how that's going to work, um, but Google clearly has an interest in making sure that standards are. Uh, you know, met for browsers and they want to keep a dog in the fight, yeah. so to speak, uh, to make sure that uh, competition's going forward. So, and Chrome has been growing. I think they're over 11% now of the market. Yeah. And this kind of shows like there's six divisions, like what they're really focused on. Yeah. They're uh, mobile, social, Chrome, YouTube, search, ads, and local. Yeah. And e commerce. So, I think the social is that's, interesting. Uh, that's seven, though. I've been hearing that six number two. But I I recorded yeah, seven. seven on here. Yeah. That's weird. That I even weird. put the six on here. Typo. Well, that's the thing, too. When I, It wasn't just the story that I got it from. I saw it on some of the other stuff saying six division. So mm-hmm. what the hey? I heard a lot about how uh, social is a big de- is going to be a big deal for them. We even heard rumors uh, that, that depending on how Google does in social this year, that's how a lot of their main i don't know about the vps here but like a lot of the bonuses at google will be based on how well they do in social nice uh, like integrating their product with social or yeah. whatever i don't know i think that google's best hope for social is going to be android yeah you know that's that's going to be that's going to be their best hope but well, other think, than that as long as they don't integrate it into gmail again yeah no kidding <laughs> well you've heard about i guess we can talk about the plus one yeah right People are pinning this as like a as a social app, but I gotta say I have a little bit different of a take on it. I think it's more like that. Uh, you remember when they launched that image versus thing, where y- you could log on and you'd be two people and you'd have to identify this image and the person that got the answer first hmm. got a point. So it's like, and it was like using humans to Turk. identify stuff. It's called Mechanical Turk. There you go. Yep. I think that this is pretty similar. I don't think this is so much social. But it's it's identifying people uh, who are you know the early adopters slash smart people crowd, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, where you know what sites are good, and then using that inform using the information that you know to build a better algorithm to so, do the machine yeah, learning. So it, br- it 
adds a different qualitative yeah. source to the links. I don't think this is social. They can call it social. They can let you share that information out to your other friends. That's uh-huh. good. But the main purpose of this is not is not building that. Better. It's not social. It's building yeah. a better Google search. Mm-hmm. And they've also said, Google has said, that they want to build a, uh, not necessarily better, but a more, um, like, I don't know what to say. Slicker? Moneyer? <laughs> the opposite of slicker. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, more not ethical but like a refined refined we, we were listening to it relevant we maybe or no like 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 legitimate maybe legitimate yeah. legitimate yeah yeah because i mean some of the things you search you get these just pages and pages and, and dave and i know a guy <laughs> that's responsible for some of this yes you know what i'm talking about right mm-hmm. uh, we, we won't name names because yeah. we're cool like that but <laughs> seo can yeah, no mean bad things yeah, it's just insane. You know what I mean? If you're just creating content to boost somebody else's... Re- that's just... It's gaming the system. It's wrong. If you are not only creating content, but like creating whole content platforms. Yeah. Like, if you create five blogs and yeah. post them with content, then that's messed up. Yeah, it is pretty messed up. So, and if you're doing it out there, we do not support you. It's you wrong. Are- you will not be an advertiser on this show. No, we don't. No, we won't play along with that stuff. We do have some standards. Yes. I mean, look at us. They're not a lot of standards. But <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. So uh, we're doing this uh, low key, but whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's uh, it's kind of interesting. But I'll, I guess I'll move on to this last one here. Okay. I wanted to cover. So the Barnes & Noble Nook Color. We've talked about it before on this show. We talked about it on the Android Tech Show. Yeah. I might have even brought it up on the iPad Show. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is a pretty strong selling device. We're talking about several million. I don't know what the number was on it, but they talked about uh, if you want to count this as a tablet, it's number two behind the iPad. Ooh. So, and that's because it sold for two hundred fifty dollars. Just a very cheap. That's nice. I think uh, we covered this before. 800 megahertz processor. It's the soccer mom tablet. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, but the great thing about it is if you root it, uh, you can run CyanogenMod Mod 7, which is what we use on our phones, or uh, some in, you know intrepid developers have ported Honeycomb's uh, emulator or whatever. The Honeycomb source isn't out, but the emulator, they put that onto the Nook Color, and it works fairly well. Um, obviously, if they get the source, it'll be better. But Barnes & Noble is finally catching on they have now opened up to register developers so they can launch an app store on the Nook Color. Nice. Making it into finally a full fledged tablet, not just an e reader. So it's pretty big stuff, I $250 think. $250 e reader. Yeah. Uh, $250 tablet. in the tablet. I'm trying to think, like, the tablet's about this big. I mean, it's not. It's not it's like Motorola Zoom ish, right? I mean, it's. I think it's a little bit smaller yeah, than an it's iPad. Smaller. It's more like Kindle size, isn't it? No, I think it's bigger. It's bigger than a Kindle. Really, it's not quite as big as an iPad. Um, but yeah, I don't know for for your money, two hundred fifty dollars. You know, to get something you can download apps and stuff on. Capacitive or receptive? Uh, it's capacitive. It's not the it's not the old school good touch screen. So, but that's what I'm saying. You know, it's uh, it's a pretty good it's a pretty good enough tablet. Yeah, and really. Uh, just with science just like, on it? Well, just like phones, Android's got to conquer, you know, they got to attack two different levels to beat Apple or whatever. One is the good enough, yeah. you know, something that's uh, like the second tier Android phones. And number two is the knock your socks off, Motorola Zoom, and beyond, you know. Mm-hmm. Like end of this year, there's going to be the, you know, the Tegra 3s or whatever. Right. So uh, I think that this is definitely something that uh, could work in their favor. One criticism, I guess, I have about it. Why didn't they just use the Amazon App Store? Hmm. For yeah. for what? For the Nook Color. Why do, <laughs> why do you think? Was that a joke? <laughs> it, it's only a half a joke. <laughs> so, yeah, of course, Amazon's a competitor yes. to Barnes & Noble. Um, but I don't know. It's uh, Is it kind of a... Do you think this is a Me Too move on their part? I mean, they're just opening up to register developers now after the Amazon App Store has been released and... Is widely considered to be a success. So I mean, with that free paid app a day, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, and a lot of uh, a lot of rumors are going around too 
uh, that Amazon's going to be releasing maybe a phone. I don't believe the phone one. An but a tablet, phone. yes. An Amazon tablet. Yeah. I saw the phone one. It had like a, uh, geez, what was on the back? Uh, solar panel. Ooh. Solar panel on the back. Like we saw we saw that from uh, the Mobile World Conference. Uh-huh. So those are real. But I don't think that this is the in you know the Amazon phone, uh, but I definitely think that they are going to release a tablet. Mm-hmm. So they got the store, the apps are really where it's at. And if you're already selling the apps, you already got users. Why not make the hardware? Totally. So do it big. We've got users, so yes, we do. We have users and followers and watchers. Mm-hmm. If you want to follow or watch more of this show, Android the Android App Show dot com is your place. For the latest news on Android apps. All kinds of great stuff on there. We also have links out to our other great profiles, mm-hmm. like on YouTube. Or you can just go right to YouTube.com slash the Android App Show. Uh, we put out all kinds of individual videos based uh, you know, for reviews or whatever. It's and the stuff. full episodes, because we're awesome mm-hmm. and we can do full episodes. Yeah, and we can't do full episodes on Twitter yet. No. <laughs> that would be intense. That would be a short episode. Yeah, you get approval for more than 140 <laughs> characters. I think people would stop using Twitter if yes. they would approve people for bigger. And that's at twitter.com slash Android App Show. Yes. Or just tweet us at Android App Show. Yeah, we put all kinds of news and updates about the show on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, And again, all those links are out on the theandroidappshow.com. Mm-hmm. And if you want some more techno advice, oh, those people yeah. out there, they like to be tech savvy in the internets. Uh, theandroidtechshow.com. <laughs> yes, we have reviews posted up there recently from the or about the Motorola Zoom. Mm-hmm. So that's the Android Honeycomb tablet. The we Thunderbolt. Some, yes, the uh, first 4G phone from Verizon. Pretty big. Yeah, so if you want to check those reviews out, definitely go to theandroidtechshow.com. Also, it's linked to at the bottom of the page of theandroidappshow.com. It's true. So, it's y- good times. Anyway you go, we gotcha. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll be back next week with some more great, 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 great information. Woo. See ya. All right, I'm out of here. It's hot in here, man. Oh, my butt's like in a numb position.